And the good thing with all this generative AI stuff is that you don't need to know everything about programming or anything technical. If you ask the proper things to the LLM, to ChatGPT, you have unlimited power. You know, my ability is to speak to the computer. Even if it is in natural language, you have to make some tricks to communicate better with the, with the computer. Cool stuff. Well, good morning there, Luis Riancho. Thank you so much for joining me today, buddy, on the Ridiculously Human podcast. Hey, how are you doing, man? Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm, I'm very pleased to, to be here chatting with you and yeah, talking about some interesting stuff related to with with AI, uh, which is, uh, I think, the best moment for us creators. Uh, in, 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 uh, so we, we can create, we can dream and then create, you know, and in no time. So I really appreciate the the opportunity and uh, yeah, pleased to meet you and, and, and say hello to all the audience. <laughs> Very cool, but And I mean, that's exactly how I found out about you was on X, you know, Twitter, where you were posting and you still are, of course, posting these amazing like images as well as like videos. And then you were like, yeah, this is all created like using AI, you know, under your, your, your name, Tech Hella on, on Twitter. And it's just like, man, it's impressive at what you're doing. I'm still amazed. Uh, with the stuff I'm, I'm creating. I mean, and I'm not credit only myself, of course. I'm great all the people behind the scenes, like the developers, the apps, and of course, the real artists behind all this stuff. As you know, uh, all the, these models are trained with uh, real images uh, created by artists. So I really respect them for creating that. And in my case, I'm very happy to share my knowledge uh, about all this AI, generative AI stuff. I've been working with it since the beginning, more or less, uh, not only in, in generative AI, in image, uh, in generative image, but in the with the LLMs like ChatGPT and, and so on, because I, I see everything as a as the same thing. Uh, I mean, I, I think my ability is to speak to the computer. And even if it is in natural language, you have to uh, to make some tricks to communicate better with the, with the computer. So I think this is where I'm good at. Uh, and from there, it's like it's just uh, uh, dreaming. As, you, as I said, uh, it's like, OK, what, want, what do you want to do today? Just start prompting and uh, you know, you can generate Im an image, a very cool image in, in just 10 seconds and uh, uh, a short clip like five or 10 seconds of dura duration in 30, 40 seconds. Then you have to edit it, create some sounds or whatever. Yeah, you can create also the music and the effects and the, and the, uh, the dialogues. So possibilities are endless and and. I know this is some kind of naive, but your imagination is the limit. It's a very used uh, phrase or, or, or expression. But I, I, I really think that now that's true. The only limit is your imagination. And I totally agree. And, and I think you have like an, imagine, like an amazing imagination and like sort of creative side to you, just seeing the stuff that you... But just even just reading the prompts that you create, you know, and then like just seeing the imagery around that. So, so yeah, but you, you're definitely an expert at that. But I would like to just, you know, sort of backtrack a little bit because your, your story is, is also like super interesting. Uh, and you, you're a computer guy, right? And I know that when you were six years old, your, your parents bought you your first computer. It was, a, it was a 486 or something like that. And uh, I think it cost them their monthly salary to, to buy it for you. So, you know, that's, that's quite a cool start into, I guess, doing what you're doing now. Do you remember what you first used the computer for? Sure. The first thing I did with the computer, okay, I was six years old, as you said, and I started to transcribe. I'm not sure if transcribe is the proper word, but to take a book, my favorite book, and write it uh, and copy the text and write it on, on a, a text editor. Just to 
train my uh, my typing skills, you know, in, in the keyboard, and and that's what my uh, that uh, was my first experience with the computer, and well, I have previous experience as my my cousin who is two years older than me. Uh, I he has uh, a computer too, and I love playing video games, of course, <laughs> and. The first video game I played, I think, uh, was that one from Macintosh, that um, uh, paper plane uh, going through an office and you have to avoid obstacles and so on. So I was like, okay, this is magic. <laughs> um, 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 from there, yeah, I started like with uh, a little bit older, with, with eight years and so on. I started to use... Um, prompt commands in in the console because uh, f that one doesn't came with Windows. <laughs> so and, and yeah, I, I was pretty amazed. I started later. Uh, okay, my parents weren't aware what I I was doing with the computer, but I started playing Doom <laughs> with ten years. <laughs> so so that's crazy. I, I'm I'm here. I'm not an an psychopath or whatever. <laughs> Even playing Doom uh, when I was ten, but yeah, from from there, you know, obviously everything was related with with video games. But also, I started to to create some uh, small uh, scripts. To, to help me uh, doing stuff like, for example, I, I've used ARJ, uh, like like the, uh, an old WinSip, a lot an, an old SIP, uh, and the commands were so long to to decompress uh, uh, the the video games and so so I created a script for not writing the whole thing just by tipping um, I don't remember the command but I created the a script just to um and uh video games <laughs> so that's what that was my first experience on, on programming maybe with with yeah 10 years more or less uh yeah from there i keep uh, i kept experimenting with the computer i i've been in in robotics too with arduino and and this kind of stuff to create yeah like i, I don't know experiments with the in the garden uh, like automatic um watering it's, it's that correct yeah and and so on and from there i started um, well maybe i'm 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 getting too fast uh, just let me know i remember like my dad he bought it was either like a 186 or a 286 um when i was young because i think i'm a little bit older than you and Man, the games were so primitive. I, I, but but I used to like love them. There was this game called Digger, and uh, yeah, I mean, this was just like uh, it's you know, it's just like you, you had to go and you were in this like little digger, like greater thing, and you had to go and um, eat certain things and whatnot. And then there was the real cool one at the time was called California Games, which um, was like a I frisbee remember that. and and like you could do yeah, like yeah, a yeah, bicycle yeah. and. Yeah, man, and but it was like, you know, it was it was. I mean, that's going back so many years now. But but yeah, those things, like, you know, look at them. Look at that. What that's done to you now, you know, like it sort of gave you a whole sort of trajectory in terms of where where your life went, sort of thing. But the other thing is like you're also really good at basketball, so you didn't necessarily just focus on you know like computer games. You had this sort of double life you know where you're like a computer guy but also a sportsman and you and you played for a long time like 26 years and you're semi-pro or something like that well i started playing at six years old too but from six to ten of course i was just learning i'm a big guy i'm almost uh two meters I'm not sure, you know, the six, you are very weird in, in, in America with this uh, imperial matrix. So I've never learned how to translate two meters uh, tall, but yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm quite tall. So I was um, uh, not very coordinated myself, you know, like, okay, very big guy and so on. So I started playing basketball and yeah, when I was 10, I was uh chosen by my region to represent them in uh in the in in their um country competition with other communities uh regions you know 
I'm, I live in Cantabria, which is one of the smallest uh, regions in Spain, and we compete. Uh, we are more or less like um, 250,000 uh, people living here in, in the whole region, and we we were competing with Madrid. Uh, they are eight million, uh, or yeah, you know. So we we went uh, to the to the championship. I was one year um, younger than my colleagues then, but well, it, it well it went very good uh, to me. I I, yeah, I scored a lot of points, grabbed a lot of rebounds. You know, I played really well. So and, and I was one year younger. And next year, uh, one year older, of course, uh, the championship for me was amazing. Uh, we almost beat madrid in the uh, uh, sorry not madrid uh, aragon which is a uh, uh, aragon like aragon not 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 the same that aragon uh, uh we almost beat them they are a very big region and um, people started uh, you know the uh scouts how do you say yeah the scouts uh start looking at me and uh, and yeah and after this championship uh, the the national team called me so I was in the same uh, roster when I was 11 years old than Sergio Rodriguez. You you know that guy? He played in 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 Portland Trailblazers a long time, not a long time ago. I'm not that old, but he played in in, in Philadelphia too. Uh, he has retired this year. He played in Real Madrid for a long time too, and I I shared a lot of moments with this kind of incredible people like there were big stars and well from there i continued playing in in my region i, I never went out uh, from from cantabria but when i uh when i was 18 you know the the, the next uh, here in spain you are you you pass from from learning phase to um, professional phase more or less when you when you are 18 and you when you are 18 you start playing with bigger guys with uh, older guys and and so on but i have started that not at 18 but at 15 so when i uh, when i uh, uh, when i get 18 years old uh, a team from the second division here in spain called me a, a, a team who's based or was based in, in cantabria too and well i started training with them uh, and from there, well, that was a very big step from amateur to, to professional. And next year, uh, another team here in, in the second divi uh, second B division, um, I, uh, they, 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 they asked me if, if I wanted to, to play with them. I started my real career there. And well, I, I'm not very very uh, good i think i'm good at basketball but my issue is my my physique because i can't jump i i jump downwards not upwards you know <laughs> <laughs> so i have to manage with with the three pointers and and you know and and with, uh, <laughs> with your elbows <laughs> be, be, being yeah being uh, quite a bit aggressive always uh, in a, in a good way of course and yeah i spent from there until I was 34, I think, uh, playing basketball, and I really love the game. My dream, one of my dreams is to go to the States and watch a basketball game, an NBA basketball game, of course. Uh, I'm, well, now I'm a big fan of Dallas Mavericks, as I love Luca, uh, because I, I really like him arguing with the referees every, all the time because I did the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would like to, this is one of my dreams, to visit the, the United States. I, I really loved the, you know, uh, in Spain, we, we see the, the States, you know, in the films and so on. So, uh, and I, I, I watch a lot of TV shows like these ones uh, for renovating the houses and, and, and you know, the, all this kind of stuff. I love that. So I would really like to visit the States. I think this is going to happen very soon because a lot of brands that are interested in my, in my work now uh, told me, hey, Luis, it would be awesome to for you to travel to the States and meet us. 
So on, uh, and I said, yeah, but you have to to pay for the for for the travel, you know, because it's very expensive for Spain. But anyway, I, it would be awesome. It would be awesome to visit there. Man, it's it's gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen. What, what you're doing, like, there's lots of interest already, sort of being created, you know. So and these guys for. You know, for them, it's nothing. They'll be like, "Hey, Luis, like, come, we, we're paying for you business class flight. Uh, we want to, we want you to teach us or, or show us." So uh, I'm excited to to see that happen, buddy. Um, but was was there any reason that you you ended up quitting the the basketball? Did anything happen in particular? I, I went too old. I, I went too old for this shit, like they say in that film. So yeah, yeah, I, I was now, nah, uh, and and you know, I, I have a five years old daughter. My wife also want. Okay, I, I work. Uh, before I went, uh, I, I became a content creator. I was the director of a tech company here in the north of Spain. Um, well, I worked a lot of hours on the day. And I decided to to balance my life. Uh, you know, I, I need to spend more time with my family. And that's why I decided to quit. And uh, of course, my legs didn't work as as, as I wanted. <laughs> So yeah, that that's what uh, that's my that was my decision. Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, eventually your body catches up with you, especially when you're playing at like such a high level. But so, and also, like you said, you're you're a super tall bloke. So, you know, like I guess there's more sort of impact on your knees and and everything like that as well. So, so yeah. So you mentioned there you you like a telecommunications engineer, and one thing that I really like dig about people, like really like about people, is when they are like aspirational, right? And they, they, they actually want to do something else. So they put in their work on the side of their job. So I know you said you, you did like programming on the side for quite some time. And then, you know, like, like, and then eventually you got into that. How did programming effectively change your life and your, your career? As I told you, I've been programming by my, learning by myself. I, I yeah, after got my career I and mean, inside the, the the career the the telecommunications engineering i learned how a little bit on how to program but all the time i was uh learning by myself and but yeah i started working as a telecommunications engineer and in all my my jobs i always try to create some scripts or mini programs that help myself and my colleagues too to be more efficient because i'm uh, i'm very obsessed with uh, efficiency optimization automatic automatic automations sorry uh, and so on so i'm always thinking of that even now uh, creating uh, ai stuff ai generated stuff i'm always thinking about how i can make this workflow the fastest uh, possible so uh, regarding your question um i was like yeah creating these kind of scripts and so on but in, in my last job job after uh, before i changed my career to developer official developer we can say i i created a very cool tool i've, I've worked with um with energetic companies and you know i, I really liked that work because uh, I traveled a lot among um, along the country because they have uh, like I don't know how to say good in English, but uh, like electric stations. Yes, uh, that's it's yeah. So we travel there and we manage all the 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 devices, you know, in a telecommunications way. But uh, all these signals were um, sent to a. A SCADA to a uh, to a software. Let's say that, and that software was very difficult to use and to get the data and notifications. I, I'm I'm talking about like okay, 2024, like in 2015 more or less. And uh, so I was talking with my boss and I told him, hey, what uh, what if I create a mini app so Anytime we lose a signal, which is uh, an issue, a, a, a big issue, we receive a notification, an email, uh, whatever, WhatsApp, whatever. Because we have 
a lot of issues because uh, imagine in the night, no one is working and a station cut the, electri the electricity. And a lot of villages are like in, in, dark, in the darkness. So you don't notice until someone calls you, of course, or in the morning when you, you try to, to open everything and, and start everything, you notice. So there's a lot of time we are losing. And my, my boss said, yeah, of course, if you are able to do that, yes, please, so, please do so. So I, I developed that program and it works so well that they are now using it seven years, like nine years after they are still using it. No, and they didn't change any uh, any uh, line of code from there. And I, I wasn't a, a, a developer, but uh, in that time, but I'm very stubborn and yeah, you know, I'm very obsessed with, with this kind of thing of things. So I was programming in Java. I've never touched Java and man, everything is working <laughs> until today. So that's how I, it started. And from there, yeah, uh, it, um, I was like a, a little bit burned in my, in my, in that job. So I decided to search for new opportunities and a startup in, in my region, uh, has an, an offer for a project manager in, in, in app development. So I contact the, uh, that person. Uh, and after one talk, she said, okay, I really love how you think. I really love how you manage projects because I was project manager in my, in my previous job or among other things. And I, I told her, okay, but I'm not a professional developer. And she said, no worries. You have time to learn because we are all learning. Uh, she, she, she has a lot of experience. She, she was, or she is, a very good developer and, and manager and so on. So she teaches me a lot of things. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I, she taught me a, a lot of things. And as I told you, I'm always trying to learn and learn. So I decided to okay, let's do this, and and I start um, studying a lot of uh, uh, you know new stuff in cloud-based systems like AWS, and uh, yeah, a lot of programming languages I am also have I have certifications in AWS in in Jira in you know in all this stuff because I really love it so it is like it was like uh, okay it's 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 uh, cool if I do that in my free time okay balancing as I told you balancing between uh, my family and the work so yeah that changed my life because I started to love what I was doing. I was starting like a half and a year ago or before, sorry. I started to share generative AI stuff. I was also doing chats or, or meetings where I talking I, I was talking about chat GPT and the consequences of using this kind of tools in 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 the regular jobs and how you can benefit uh, of it from it instead of the AI is going to uh, make a lot of jobs uh, redundant burn or lose. Or, yeah, th that's it. So I'm focusing. I was focusing on how you can benefit on it. So people using this kind of tools are going to improve their skills exponentially. And people is is like, oh, but uh, okay, this is a problem. Because no. This is not a problem. This is a big advantage and we have to to encourage people to try these kinds of tools because it's like uh, being yourself with steroids. <laughs> it's like you can do whatever you want. So you're not worried about uh, like AI really at all. You, you're actually very excited about it. I think a lot of jobs are going to disappear, but this is happening all the time in the history. When... Okay, we can go uh, how, uh, the longer you want, but for example, when when the cars appeared, you know that the, the people in horses were oh this this is a devilish <laughs> um, uh, creation. No man, this is going to improve your life, and the same happens with the calculator, with Photoshop, with 
whatever you want. And the human is evolving every time. I think this is the most in disrupting technology in, in the history. And, and this is going to happen uh, in, the, in the future. The, the, I'm pretty sure I have a cool meeting yesterday. I told you in, in the in, when we chat uh, before before start talking. And I was talking with Luma team, uh, people who, who doesn't know about Luma. Luma is a big company and they have a lot of um, uh, apps re uh, related to 3D composition with, with your iPhone, for example. And now they are focusing on video creation. And we were talking with the CEO and his vision was so impressive to me. His vision of the of, of the near future, like it was, it was like a okay. I'm pretty excited with ChatGPT today, <laughs> and, and it's a old technology. And you are telling me that we are going to have this kind of neural link stuff and start thinking and creating videos with my mind. Are you serious? And, and and I mean, this is not a, a dream or, or this is going to be real in the next five, 10 years, maybe. So I, I really missed the point. No, no, no. I was just wondering, I was just asking if, you know, like if you are, obviously you're excited or if there was anything you sort of maybe scared about, about AI. The thing is, of course, the the jobs are changing, but not disappearing at all. Uh, I mean... If you work at a supermarket, for example, like filling or refilling the produce in, you know, in the shelves and so on, okay, you have to start thinking about changing that. Okay, this is not going to affect uh, affect everyone in the world. Things, uh, technology is faster than the world itself. Okay, and this is not going to happen in, in every uh, grocery store in the world. But you better start thinking about changing that kind of uh, abilities you have. And the good thing with all this generative AI stuff is that you don't need to know everything uh, about programming or, or anything technical. You are talking to the machine in natural language. You, you can, okay. I've created a machine learning model. You know, machine learning, I, I'm not going to, to extend on that, but it's like the machine is learning and, and, and you, you teach it to, to, to do some things. Uh, I was in charge of a project that uh, was like a um, uh, phone chat, a phone, uh, a phone bot, sorry. Uh, uh, so the, the customers were talking with, 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 with her because she was a woman. And it was based on Alexa stuff. Uh, in AWS, you have Lex, which is the origin of Alexa. So you can, uh, users uh, can maintain a conversation. So, okay, okay, I have an issue. Uh, okay, what's happening to you? Okay, okay, okay. So you get all these inputs and we uh, uh, and do something with that. Okay, we have databases and and you have to teach the bot on how it can help the customer, but uh, the, the example I, I wanted to 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 bring to bring up is I created in thirty minutes using ChatGPT. They they have a, a developer mode that helps you to to train to to create some some stuff and and run it in 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 the in the ChatGPT page conversation. I created in thirty minutes a model capable to predict how long was going to be each conversation <laughs> in wow. 30 minutes which uh, with a uh, 95% of accuracy wow and 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 you can say oh luis you are you are a genius man no 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 i just asked chatgpt the proper questions and the, the thing is chatgpt has the knowledge about almost all the world stuff so if you ask the proper things to the chat. I, 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 I'm not paid by open AI. You can use Claude, Gemini, whatever you want. But if you if you ask the proper things to the LLM, to ChatGPT, you have 
unlimited power, you know? So that's why I think, yeah, a lot of works, uh, jobs are going to disappear or change, but is first of all, our uh, responsibility of, of our technologists uh, working on, on, on this uh, on this kind of plat platforms to learn about them and to share the knowledge we have. But this is why what I'm doing on X since a year and a half related to generative AI. But I think this is our responsibility because we will be, uh, belong to the humanity. And okay, if, if we don't do that, things are going to change faster, um, not for better for most of people. So, okay, this is again, not fear, but respect this technology and, um, and how we, and how we have to, to use it in our benefit. Don't think about Terminator is coming or, or whatever. Well, I think it, we are very close to that. Not a, a, a robot killing us, but uh, NVIDIA is working on a very awesome stuff like a physical AI. I think they are, they are calling it. And this is coming soon. But yeah, don't fear it. Just embrace it, use it, test it, and... I assure you, all, all the people listening to the podcast or watching the podcast, I assure you, you are going to get in love with that. Because it's it's like being yourself very, very smart. Okay. Uh -huh. I, I, even even you can't put your hair, put hair on. Man, you know, I'm very bad. And I used to create uh, images, uh, cool images with me, uh, being myself with hair. I said uh, like a like a Thor. Uh, video where I was, I was like bruising my hair, and so AI is cool and it's a very powerful tool. We, I hope everyone use that. Uh, same as a mobile phone. I think that like people that are using it now and are like understanding the sort of capability of AI, like they are going to be sort of way ahead in terms of, um, you know, like what, what they could potentially say earn and these sort of things. I think there's lots of guys that are like using AI to, um, you know, to help them with their businesses, to help them with, uh, I don't know, their, their brands, their et cetera, et cetera. Like the people that are using it are going to like almost create a gap, uh, a, a, like ahead of the people that are not using it. That, that's how I feel. I feel we're like at the stage where it's really usable and really beneficial. And if you're not sort of jumping on the AI bandwagon, you're kind of going to get left a little bit behind. Do you think that's a fair assessment? Yeah, of course. It's okay. Uh, totally, totally. That, that, uh, I 100% I agree on that. Uh, it's like when websites, websites uh, appeared, not every uh, commerce have their e-commerce website, you know? And nowadays, almost uh, I can't say maybe the ninety percent of the commerce has they have their own business website, and this is the same. Uh, but things are moving very, very fast, uh, quite faster than before. Uh, I, I can tell you uh, on generative AI on video gener on generative video. Sorry, six months ago. I had access to Pika Labs, uh, which is a tool, a very cool tool to create videos. And I've created a beginning song uh, with Suno, I think. No, sorry, sorry, not, not a beginning song, uh, but a, um, some kind of trailer of a TV show. Of, uh, because I, I'm in love with Beacon his, Beacon's history and, and so on, <laughs> as you can see. And uh, well, I started to, to create this, this, this trailer or this short. And I was like, man, I'm the king of the world. I created this in five hours. This is amazing. I'm the new Steven Spielberg. So, <laughs> okay, I shared it. It got a lot of engagement, a lot of impressions. Uh, even Elon Musk, you know, well, we talk about Elon later. But last year, Elon liked my tweet about Vikings. And I was amazed. And six months later, or eight months maybe later today, 
I watched the, well, it was yesterday. I watched the trailer and I was, oh man, this is horrible. Oh, really? It wasn't <laughs> you know? that good. So, yeah, yeah, because, okay, uh, in that moment, with the tools we had, I think it was like the best we, we, we could achieve at that moment. But now, technology is evolving so fast. Like, this is like playing that game you mentioned before against uh, whatever, The Last of Us game, for example, like graphics, you know, like the graphics difference. So these technologies are changing so fast because of the use of, of the own AI, uh, because p developers and, and, and um, researchers and, and all the people involved in, in this world, in this AI world, are using their own tools to, to, to work faster. So, uh, and of course, in parallel, we have NVIDIA and, and all of these companies evolving so fast too, with new devices and powerful devices and so on. <clears throat> so things are um, changing exponentially fast. So the sooner you get used, at, at least used to these tools. I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, okay, it took me like a year to master mid journey. Uh, it's maybe it's, it's not, Humble for me to say that, but I've worked with me, with Mid Journey a lot. I created a lot of guides, a lot of prompts. I, I think I've shared more like one thousand prompts in 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 my no more, very quite more. Uh, so I think now I'm one of of the not one. I I, I am a master of Mid Journey. It's uh, but because I worked a lot with it, but. I recommend people that are not in the tech business to take a look into it. It's very easy to use because you have only to write, to express yourself, to 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 share your idea in a natural language. From there, you can learn like, okay, let's see how we can prompt better, like using specific tokens that fits better with the AI and so on. But I really recommend people to get used to these technologies because they are going to be the future as Forget about typing or, or or all this kind of stuff because you are going to talk. Or as I told you before, you are going to control your, your mobile phone with your brain. But maybe this is going to be uh in the in the in the in the future, in the long future. But anyway, uh, you have now in ChatGPT uh, uh the possibility to 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 have a conversation with that and, and a very fluid conversation. I use it to improve my English. Wow. I talk to the to ChatGPT, and I, I I just open the tool, type, uh, push the the button, and and she she has a, a her voice, and and she tell me, hey Luis, how can I help you today? And I tell her, okay, I want to improve my English, so please create um uh, a game that we can play. So. We can play that. I can improve my English. I if I if I make a mistake, you stop. You tell me stop, Luis. The proper word or whatever is this one. And I really improved my English doing that. And just with my mobile phone and talking, you know. So as I said before, your imagination is the limit. And this is an example. This is a, a very, you know, a, a, anyone can think about that. But I use it to play with my a daughter in in the when we are in the car, I'm driving a long trip. I I connect to the, uh, the mobile to to the you know the Android uh, thing, and I start playing with her. Like uh, I'm not sure if in America or or you have this playing. It's a it's a game like it's called Beo Beo, which is um, I see I see. Uh -huh. I spy I, with my little well, eye. Okay, yeah, and, and you have to say the letter, and okay, you have to guess which. So, uh, she plays with ChatGPT when no I'm ways. driving. In, in, yeah, and she really enjoys. We play together, right? Not, not. I, I'm not. I'm not that kind of father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so we play together because I really want her not to to be a uh, to be immersed in this technology. No, no, no absolutely not. She's very, very young, and I want her to to start testing this stuff when, whatever, whatever, uh, whenever she wants, but with control, of course. But it's like get used to this technology, and she really is. She uh, sometimes he he, he told he tell me, "Hey, Dad, 
can you create a unicorn flying in, in a castle or whatever uh, with the tools you use? And I say, absolutely, absolutely, Lara. And yeah, I type a prompt. I create the the the. Okay, I I, I also made a a video from a story she wrote last year. See, uh, we were we play. A, she loves to to draw and to create histories. It's like his father, and and we created a, a book, a handcrafted book. Where I don't remember the the girl that uh, lose her unicorn. It was the history. So we wrote the history and so on. And when I had time, I decided to take a photo of each um, of each page, which has a a, a draw of, of uh, for her. I, I didn't draw anything. And put it uh, and, and use the AI to change the image to create a quite more realistic one. You can do, do this image to image stuff with AI. For example, I'm a horrible drawer. Uh, with these big hands, I can not draw. That's that's uh, you know evolution. So uh, I, I I'm very bad at drawing. But okay, I, I can draw figures. I, I'm not that bad. So I take a photo. Upload it to to the AI tool. In this case, is Remix, and you type a prompt like, "Okay, make this guy like cyberpunk with a whatever background or what you know." And from there, you you have your improved image from from scratch from a drawing. So I, I I did that with the book we we created, and from there I animated it, and I create also a narrator voice that was. Uh, telling the the his the, the story uh, as as the video was playing, you know, and I share with well in, in two languages in Spanish and in English for sharing with my community, and she really enjoyed that because he told me that this is what I was thinking about, you know, so this is how my way to to get her in in this world. But of course, not touching any of these tools or, or these devices. But I think uh, this is going to benefit her in the future because everything is going to be AI handled. You know, I think it's so cool that you you're using it to create stuff like that uh, with your daughter. You know, not just for your daughter, but like with her actually, yeah, teaching her the capabilities. You know, so so are you like a little bit concerned then as a father um, to give her? Things like a phone and stuff, is that, you know, something you, you're kind of worried about? That's my biggest, yeah, the, here I have fear. <laughs> <laughs> from this kind of devices, um, yeah, of course, from her, the guys around her in the future. But yeah, I have my my gang ready for that. <laughs> now, jokes, jokes aside, yeah, I'm, I'm very worried about that. The thing is, I'm quite uh, convinced that in, in the near future, or maybe when when she has a age that he can handle a mobile phone, maybe I think it's very early. But guys in the school, uh, children in the school are having mobile phones with eleven years. Maybe uh, in my case, I think this is very soon. I started using a mobile phone when I was thirteen, and Alcatel what one touch easy. I I have my one touch, but I can I, I only. Can uh, I only could send messages, uh, SMS, or uh, not calling, but uh, you know, uh, send a ringtone, uh, just one one tone. And I I was uh, my my parents just let me use the mobile phone for like one hour a day, like sending send one message to your friends or that girl you like in the school. But now this is okay. You can do whatever you want with this mobile phone. Of course, there are a lot of tools like parental control and so on. But once you give a child uh, a mobile phone, you lose control. And I'm very afraid about um, bullies uh, and how uh, how she can manage this kind of situation because she's going to live. Uh, these kind of situations in in one way or another, but man, social net uh, social media, social networks, it's like being exposed 
all the time and all, to all the people around. It's not like uh, the bully in the school, like uh, telling you are very ugly. Okay, uh, maybe I can handle that. Maybe I can punch in your face or whatever, or run or whatever. But you are on Facebook or on Twitter. Okay, I'm, I'm on Twitter. I receive hate all the time. But man, I, I'm, I'm a, a tough man. I, I, I work in, in, in the... In, in 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 the bars in taverns when i was studying i was working i i, I was um treating with people with very bad people and i don't care i i can I, I can manage i a big man and a strong man but imagine being 13 13 and and you post a photo and suddenly mm, a bad mm, guy a, a, a colleague uh, start to hold you are ugly you are whatever you know you know that's that kind of stuff this is very hard to handle because you are completely exposed and not only did this guy is is telling you bad bad things but the other guys or, or, or girls whatever uh most of them are shutting up uh, are not saying hey please stop or, or whatever because it's like entertainment and if you don't manage this first bully thing, ooh, you can get in, into a hard, a, a deep hold, hold. Sorry. So this is what I fear. Uh, not only being bullied, but of course, if she is a bully, uh, I stop it. Uh, <laughs> well, whatever I, I, I or the way I, 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 I can, but not sure if I prefer her to being a bully or to being bullied. Because if if she's a bully, it's it's uh, like I didn't did my work. I didn't do my work properly. Exactly, like you didn't say spend enough time with her as a dad, and you know just provide her with um, I don't know. I guess good good morals and and ethics and and these sort of things. Um, and it's it, it's interesting. I have a friend that runs a school in South Africa, and he he told me really recently. He said he's never seen so much depression in young kids. And he's been a school teacher for 30 years, okay, 35 years maybe. And he said he's never seen so much depression in schools. Uh, and it's all down to phones and social media. And he basically is now saying he doesn't recommend anyone like under 16 has a phone or access to social media because. It's almost becoming like uncontrollable in the school because teachers are now having to deal with pupils that are depressed and they're not trained for that. They're trained to teach, you know, and when, you know, when you have like say three or four or five kids that are depressed, they bring everyone down in the class. So, and this is just not, you know, a thing say specific to his school. This is a worldwide issue. So, yeah, I mean, we have to be very careful with, um, you know, devices and stuff and definitely think about it more because at the end of the day, it's still kind of like in its infancy, it's almost kind of a new thing still, you know, we're only learning now the, the repercussions of, you know, giving kids, young, young kids phones and social media and stuff. And it's, it's not cool. It's not good. So we have to, as parents, we have to, as parents be very disciplined, I think, and strict. As you said, it's like, it's uh, their childhood, so it's very important to to supervise. Okay, for me as a as a as a as a father, it's very easy to to take this this impressive tool, this this iPad, put on Netflix, and hey, there you go, and that's it. Yeah, I'm 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 the the best father of the world because she's entertained. No man, you have to stop working or whatever you are doing and spend time quality time with your with your children and yeah avoid uh, uh, screens as 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 possible because okay i spent i mean almost all the time all the time with with a screen and this is quite sad you know because okay if if you if you think about it i i, th I thought about it like a week ago 
and it was like, a, okay, I'm starting in the morning, I make my coffee, and when I sit down, I start to to handle my you know my DMs, my notifications, then go to here to to my job place, and I have three screens, the mobile, the iPad. I'm using it all the devices all the time. Okay, I stop working. I go to have the lunch, and we put on the TV. I stop uh, the lunch. I end the lunch, and I came again to to work. Again, five screens. I stop working, and I go with my wife. And if it is a rainy day, we start watching Netflix. And if I'm lucky, okay, we we can cook a little bit <laughs> with my wife. And then go to sleep. So, like 12 hours or 14 hours or whatever, being with with the screens. Okay. In my in my case, it's related to my job, of course. But but it's very important to uh to differentiate the, the, the job to, to this kind of entertainment. Okay, it's good if you see uh if you watch a, a, TV, a Netflix TV show, but okay. Let's let's uh, stop a bit, a little bit. Go for a walk, go whatever. Uh, doing some, do some push-ups <laughs> or or whatever. So uh, it, it was like an alert for me, but not not all for me because I, I can separate the reality from this stuff. But for my my daughter, okay, I have the responsibility to 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 teach her to use a, in a proper way this kind of of, of devices and so on. So. And it's very hard because everyone is using the, 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 their mobile. My, um, of course, me. And whoa, we have this. Is, I, I think this is the biggest challenge in my life. Um, this uh, and, and to save a lot of uh, money to buy, a, to buy a bigger house. It is a big concern. And um, yeah, I mean, every parent goes through this, I think, you know, maybe not everyone. I don't think every parent is, is maybe conscious of it, you know, like a lot of them are just happy, you know, turning on the TV or giving them the iPad or telephone and stuff. And like, that's not good. You know, that's what, that's not creating a, a healthy child. And I think, um, yeah, that, that, that balance is absolutely essential for, for our little ones. And, and, you know, imagine going through your whole childhood and like watching a screen, you know, like it's almost like a lost childhood, isn't it? I mean, I think of me back in the day, like I didn't have a phone until I was 18. Cause like I said, I'm a bit older than you. So, um, I didn't uh, have one until I was you know, 18. Uh, and you know, I mean, growing up as a kid was great. All I did was really play outside and play sports and play with my buddies and stuff. And I feel like that's kind of like a, a, a lost thing for, for a lot of kids. So we have to be very conscious of how we raise our kids and uh, make sure that they uh, they at least find a balance. I think it was easier for my parents for my parents to control the time I spent with the computer because of a lot of things. But for example, when th the first time I have internet on my house, I, I think you you are going to have the same experience. It was like a, a thirty three dot six k modem. You have to put the cable on. Put, uh, 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 you know, like expand the cable to to the telephone uh, plug, yeah. and after five or six in the in the afternoon, yes. because before you have to pay an extra, <laughs> and my parents were uh, you uh, you know uh, doing that, so um, I have a very limited time to use the computer, like one or two hours um, in a day. I think less than two hours. So I, I'm, some child now are spending like five, six, seven hours a day in, in that. I have a, well, I, I hope, well, if he listens, I, I think he's not going to understand what I'm, I'm saying. But the neighbor from, uh, I have uh, over, uh, he's, okay, the family uh, and, and the, the child or the kid is, I, I think, 14 or 15 years old and I listen to him playing Fortnite like at 2 or 3 a.m. and he's mad. It's like uh, yelling all the time 
and insulting the others is it's like okay it, I, that's I'm very afraid about that. I, I I didn't mention that to their parents because they are it's their life. But uh, he's not playing alone. He's playing with with his friends because he's he's talking to them like hey, hey Pablo or whatever. So okay, man. Uh, okay, one day it's okay. Uh, I'm indeed my my next free day I have. I'm going to play Baldur's Gate 3 all the time. You know, I, I'm going to see, you know, I'm very freak. But because, okay, I, I bought Baldur's Gate like a year ago when it was uh, beta access or two years ago, and I've never played it until now. But it's okay, one day it's okay, yeah. Okay, it's like going to, to whatever, to hike. It's an uh, experience, but you have to control that. But this guy, uh, this kid is playing Fortnite all the time and yelling and and getting very angry. This is not healthy for for her brain, you know. And I'm very uh, yeah afraid about all all, yeah, all these kids that are losing their childhood. And that's not only because of their parents, because I think they are the main responsibles of 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 this, but also the governments. In, in all, all the world, uh, okay, you have to to create some barriers or control in all this stuff to help people because not everyone knows how a PS5 work. My my parents don't know how to to turn on the PlayStation, you know. So you have to help these guys, these these people. And uh, as you said, you have a a, um, a teacher, a, a, fr a friend who's teacher. I have two. And he 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 tells me, uh, the guys are stupid, oh, stupid wow. because they they don't know how to have a conversation like you and me are having now, because they don't know how to relate with others without a mobile phone. Yeah, and that's because when we were younger, we went to the to the street to play football, basketball, whatever, to use our imagination. And they don't have an imagination because they, if they want something, they just Google it. So it's a it's a very interesting matter. Uh, and as, as, as you, uh, yeah, I, I'm in in a WhatsApp group with other fa uh, parents in 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 the in the school uh, for my daughter, and we are speaking all the time about that. Um, I hope when my my daughter is older, like yeah, ten or eleven years old. I don't know. All this stuff is going. I hope it's going to be more controlled. Like I, you have to to identify yourself to have a phone or to have or to join Facebook or or Twitter. You have to be identified because this is the only way you can avoid people bullying or well or, or worse things like you know like asking for nudity pictures or whatever mm. so we need more control and um and the companies are not interested in that because they have a lot of information of us that they are selling to the bigger companies so let's see how it, uh, what happens and it's a very very difficult matter because you all you I, you probably know what is happening with the telegram ceo and founder uh, he's been arrested in in in, in france and uh, hey this is very difficult uh, to manage free speech. Uh, man, you have to control. But well, this is a, a, a another topic for for other chat. Yeah, no, but it's also like a you know really relevant one. It's um, yeah, it, it, it's weird. You can kind of, I don't know. Like I, I think that all speech should be pretty much free. At least speech, you know. Like other things where you have like guys sharing terrible images of of say young people like you know pedophiles and stuff like that that stuff must be totally banned and i guess that that's what needs to stop on a lot of these social media platforms especially things like facebook and you know i don't know other ones but i know facebook said had, had like a history of that but in terms of speech like people i think should be able to say say what they want um and if you have an issue with that, you need to be able to uh, say it back better, you know, and debate back better with them. Um, that, but but by like censoring people in the world, it's 
it's a very dangerous thing to censor what people are saying. Um, you create, I don't know, you just create a whole nother beast of almost humanity, just which kind of then wants revenge because you're, you're stopping them from expressing themselves. And the world is in a very interesting place right now when it comes to that because of, you know, there is a lot of information out there. There's a lot of easy ways to communicate um, and they're trying to crack down. And then I don't think the people that are trying to crack down have like a, a clue what they're doing and, and they're sort of targeting, you know, maybe the wrong people a lot of the time or, you know, people that don't fit their narrative and that's not necessarily fair either. So, yeah, we're seeing a lot of stuff at the moment, which seems a little bit concerning, you know, and um, it's, this is part of the challenge, I guess, of of new inventions, you know, like the internet and chat and all these sort of things where we're sort of going through those challenges now and we need to find out a, a better way, like as a society, how to manage them all. According to my experience, and I, as I told you, I'm receiving hate all the time. Also, a lot of support. It's like 90%, 10%, more or less. And when I when I receive hate, I, I, I receive hate in, in many different ways. Like, you are a thief you are, because of, of the AI-generated content I said, where I'm not getting any dollar from that. I, I mean, I'm not selling my videos. I'm not selling my images. I just share my knowledge. Anyway. I received like you are a thief, you are you, know, you are bullshit. Whatever. Okay, um, okay. A lot of people. I, I I have I had a viral post like in January where I made a, a spelling not a spelling a grammar mistake. Okay, like I said, this is this tool is awesome to. Uh, I didn't remember. I don't remember the the exact term that. To, to 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 have old photographs and renew them to create a, a, a cool one based on, on that. So I, I used a term that didn't fit exactly what it was doing. I mean, it, it's like, it was like reinvent the, the image, not to... Um, uh, sorry, sorry, but I don't remember that. Anyway, people were telling me uh, yeah, this is not uh, that. This is reimagining. Okay, okay, and it generated a lot of debate. So the post got like eight million views and and so on. And haters start writing a lot of bad stuff. But I received like two or three DMs telling myself to suicide. What? Okay, I, I, and the, my you know um, just remember that. But not for it doesn't affect me. It didn't affect me, but I was thinking about, imagine there is a, I, I'm not 38 years old and I'm not a normal person. I, I don't have mental problems, I, I think. <laughs> but anyway, imagine you, you are a 16 years old a child or 18 or whatever, and you wrote a post that is doesn't fit with anyone or with someone. And this, this guy told you to suicide. And the um, the, the uh, and the, the the kid or or the man who wrote that it has a depression or many uh, or some mental issues don't have to be depression whatever anxious or or what anxiety or anxiety or or whatever. Uh, you are pushing it to the limit. It's pushing him to the limit. Maybe this guy is going to go to a bridge and throw himself to the. Are you thinking about what you are saying? You told me to keep my life. So, so now I, 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 myself, I didn't have any issues. I, I just ignore them, block. Well, I'm not blocking anyone in Twitter right now. I have th zero blocks, but this is uh, uh, other other things. So, in my opinion, the only way to avoid this kind of behavior is to identify anyone using uh, a social media account, because. As I told you, I receive a lot of hate, but the worst hate I receive is from anonymous people. People with, a, with their name or their photograph, they can be uh, haters and they can say to me, okay, your work is bullshit. Okay. I, do you think so? Be happy with that. But I have never been insulted by anyone who has their profile name, uh, their name, their real name or the real photograph 
because okay to, uh, most of the people are not psychopaths so they are not okay and i think this is at least one way to avoid this kind of behavior because these people that tell you to suicide or bad things are cowards yeah they are not going to tell these things in the street and i tell them man if if you see me in the street you are going to change to the other side because because i'm very big and i have very uh, you know i'm i'm strong it, like when they meet you in the street and you this like 2 meter tall bloke and they they're like oh flip that's him <laughs> or <laughs> you know like and that's that's half the i i have yeah i have a big a big sort of um I guess issue with that as well. Like I, I, I don't, I just don't know what drives people to be so hateful and so angry on social media. Like it doesn't, to me, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Fair enough. Like people are going to say stuff that, that you don't like. That's cool. Just, just move on or like, like just, you know, but, but it definitely is an issue with the anonymous say accounts. And it's an interesting, interesting one because it's, you know, it has been a, another topic, I guess, of discussion. And, 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 and I have like, friends on the other side that are they like to say remain anonymous um because they don't want like you know the governments to know everything about them and, and all these things and that's also fair enough you know i can i'm totally in that camp like i'm like you know i want some some things to be i don't want i don't want it like say a government knowing everything about me for example i think you should still have a sense of freedom being a human on on this planet earth um but but there does need to be some sort of responsibility uh when it comes to yeah what you you know mean things and 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 stuff like that that you can say to people um because you also never know like you said there might be a guy who who you're saying something to who's you know he's on the brink of of like suicide or something and then you say something mean to him and then he's like oh well you see and then he goes and he does something so yeah it's it's a very tough one you have to have like a real thick skin to be on social media like i learned that quickly like i've been on on twitter for a long time but i didn't use, i never re, i never used it at all until basically covid started right and then i know I, I learned very quickly that you needed to like almost zone out like if you post something and someone comes and attacks you you just need to zone out and you you can't take it personally because um otherwise you can you can get just get so upset and like like derail your whole day you know and you have like a terrible day because someone said something horrible to you you have to you have to have like a real strong character though to i think be on social media um to deal with a lot of that stuff well, one of my biggest discussions um very close to hate but with some kind of respect it was with one of the Cuphead, do you know this this uh this uh animation uh, Cuphead? Okay, it's yes, like Cap a, Cat, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's Cuphead, yeah. And one of 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 the creators of this of the drawers, official drawers, real drawer of dust, uh, we started a discussion about AI. And whoa, it was very uh I I I came very I I I ended very tired because this is not a debate. It's, it's like um, talking with a wall because, okay, I, I really respect artists, as, as I said in, the, in my first uh, intervention here, uh, and I really respect their work, but this is something quite different. I don't mean, I, I don't want to be an artist. I don't consider myself an artist because I create something different. I'm a creator or whatever. This is going to be a, a new way of art in, in some way in the future. I, I really know that. But I, I don't want to be in, in that in that space. I want to be an educator. Entertain. Uh, ed, edu, uh, uh, how edu, they say? Edutainer. Ed, edutainer. Edutainer. That's it. That's it. So I, I want to be that uh, and, and share my knowledge to everyone. Uh, and I was telling uh, him, okay, just try the tool. Just give me your opinion. Using, use it in your benefit. But the man was like, okay, you are a thief or whatever. So, okay, I, I, I ignore him. But man, there is, I think all the, all these people with, uh, with all hate inside, they just want the attention. This is the only thing that uh, matters to, to them. So if you give them attention, they are going, it's like, like a, an animal. If you, if you, if you bring them food, they are going to come with you all the time. 
and this is the same if you beat these people with with your time they are going to take your your hand and <laughs> and continuously uh, uh, writing you but in a bad way which is not good and that's why i really love the ai art community in twitter i i know in twitter not in in all in other socials because all people is very supportive and very kind since the beginning all it started with chris castan uh, it's hard for me to to pronounce that chris castanova uh, who is uh, he, who is working now in adobe but he's he's a, she's an artist and and she she came famous because she was one of the first persons to 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 create a a, a final product with ai he created a comic called saria said a r uh y a sorry uh, spelling in, in in another language is hard <laughs> for me so saria and and a uh, subtitle if you want to 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 take that uh she's at i create life all together in twitter uh, she's one of the best content creators around and she started that in in a year more or less like a year and a half i started engaging engagement engaging with her sharing my prompts my images and everyone who was joining the community was super kind because it's like i mean um <laughs> it's 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 very similar to um ah how do you say this word let me do a quick search in chat gpt because i have it open uh uh, it's it's the AR community is very close to uh okay it's easy to translate like a sect you know yes. oh yes 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 but 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 not in a bad way of course like a cult like a cult that's that's it like like a cult uh um, sometimes i i i love for, for myself like a, okay this is for the community it's like a, okay i'm the leader of something weird but it's true all the people here is very supportive it's sharing their knowledge it's sharing uh, pictures videos their creativity their ideas their dreams so that's why this really works because there is no hate inside the air community okay you have of course some accounts that are uh, stupid guys or, or women but this is the less cases so that's why i really love to work on it because now it's my 24 7 work job and i really enjoy that because everyone is very supportive hey tekala thank you so much for sharing this prompt or or this knowledge this workflow whatever and i mean okay man i'm very happy because now i'm earning money doing that so this is incredible i can i can i can imagine a better job that sharing my knowledge to other people and, and getting paid for it so that's it. I think it's awesome. I think this is one of the the beautiful things of technology. You know, despite a lot of the the sort of negative stuff that we've also spoken about, which is which is definitely something that we need to be acknowledge. There's also like a massive world of of opportunity when it comes to the the whole tech space, and you know, just the the doors that it opens for you. I know that you, you know, you left your job, and now you're working for yourself, and you you're effectively like doing even better now you know, than when you were, say, um, you know, working in, in your company. And uh, that's just amazing. And you're doing something you love and you, you know, like it comes out, but like in your posts, you can, I can feel like the passion. Do you know what I mean? Like you, it, it's obvious you, you, the way you express yourself, how much you enjoy it. And uh, I know you're just going to go from strength to strength. So that's really, really, really cool. Um, as we start, like just finishing off, off very soon, like, um, you know, I just have like a, a couple of questions. Like, what are you, what are you most excited about? It's like either yourself professionally or work-wise that, uh, that's coming up for you in the future. I started um, a, a journey creating my own uh, AI studio. A, uh, yeah, AI film, filmmaking studio with uh, two, two friends, of course, not alone. And I'm very excited about we started like two weeks okay okay we were working on it like uh, for months and now we officially started and there's been a lot of interest and we are receiving a lot of 
uh, in, uh, messages from people interested on, on creating projects projects with us. Um, and I'm pretty excited to be part of this advertisement filmmaking world because I've never imagined that. Man, I, I'm a tech guy. I was writing code lines. And now I have the opportunity to work with amazing people. Uh, like a year ago, more like a year, yeah, more or less like a year ago, I was working with uh, a known uh, Hollywood director to create some images. I cannot say more because it's not official, so sorry. But it, it happened a year ago. And now we are creating amazing stuff with brands that are interested in, on, on, on creating projects with us because I've served an advertisement I created for Adidas. It's it's like a 40 seconds video created in two hours. It went it went viral. I, I know in LinkedIn, uh, two person uh, two people from Adidas saw my profile, <laughs> which is crazy. I, I'm not sure if I had to talk with my lawyer or what, but in any case, a lot of messages of hey Tekala, uh, do you work uh, in, in in a specific project? So. I, I think it's the first time a lot of people not from the AIR community is interested in AI. And this is crazy. I'm being part of it and also being part of a lot of early access um, tools. And, and, you know, it's like I, I'm a, a small part, of course, of all of this stuff, of this AI world. This is going to be created. and. Yeah, I, I'm now. I'm, I'm now like an. I'm not like like being an influencer because I don't want to influence anyone. I, I just want to to share my thoughts, not the way you think. Uh, uh, sorry, I just want to share my knowledge, not the way you, I think, because the way I think is unique, uh, and yours too. Uh, you know, so being part of this whole thing, which is going to disrupt everything in the next years, it's like uh, okay, it's like being part of history in some way. And that's what excited me the most. And of course, um, uh, um, I love to earn money and uh, the brands and, and, and so on are, are very interested in the way I share content because when I do a, a, a collaboration, a, a, collaborator, a collaborative post, like saying, okay, this, this tool is good and, and you have to use it. I'm not doing it like okay these people paid me and i'm going to tell you to use that no i test the tool before it's like i i received like 10 or 15 uh, adver uh, collaboration proposals all, all we every week and i discard like nine maybe 10 maybe every 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 collaboration because i don't like the tool okay because i i, I maybe no not that i don't like i i think it doesn't fit with my audience of, uh, or it doesn't fit on what I'm doing because I really go, uh, I really want to grow organically, not like, you know, you feel me? So uh, I think this work, this works. Uh, it's not like, a, it's like being myself, not, not only selling something or telling people to try that. No. I create an original workflow for you to use this app. Like you want to create your um, your anime avatar uh, and talking, okay, and, and just put it on, on another screen with a different background and create your TV show, whatever. And I do it for my, uh, by myself first and then share with the people because they are going to be interested in this stuff. I'm not sharing videos like, okay, this is a tutorial from this company and this is super good. Try it out with this link. No, man, I don't want to be that way because first, I think I'm going to lose a lot of followers. And secondly, I've, I, I feel like I'm an imposter or, uh, you know, so that's why I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, and, and of course, as I told you, like being part of a big thing in history. And believe me, and I told you before, Things are changing so fast that we can't imagine. We can't imagine what's happening 
not not next year, but in October maybe. So that's what excited me the most, and also meeting a lot of cool people like you, for example, or or you know, I have a lot of new friends around the world. Uh, yesterday I was talking to uh, to I was talking to Alan T, which is another creator uh, in the AR community. We were we were in the in the same medium, and he wrote me after that, and he told me, "Hey, Tech, we have to make you coming for uh, to the to the US. Uh, I, I really want to meet you and have a beer with you." Uh, and man, I really appreciate that because. We talk uh, several times. We have, yeah, like a friendship. And, okay, I feel like uh, a lot of creators, we are connected in some way. And and I really enjoyed this this journey uh, in, in that way too. I think that's very cool. Like a couple of things there, you know, I like that you, you're so sort of moralistic in terms of um, who you are and what you want to share. And, and, and like, you know, you, you want to keep your independence, like an autonomy by not having these brands say like okay can you sort of write about us and we'll pay you sort of thing and you're just gonna go no no i'm gonna do what i want to do and and you and share the ones that i like and i think that's really really great and then the other cool thing was like you know turning your your online relationships into like real relationships you know so like like that guy you said like you know hopefully you do get to fly to america and have a beer with him and i think that's really important for people to to realize, I think a lot of people, especially over the last like four years, have switched a lot of their life to online um, and made a lot of online friends as well, but maybe not uh, had the opportunity to turn those into real relationships in person. You know, it's, it's not always possible when you're in Spain and the person's in America. Um, but if you are in the same country, do your absolute best to to do that because you know, this is the real cool thing about technology is it's allowing us to connect and to make friendships that we, we might never have made before. So, sorry, Tech, what's your what, what what's the best way for people to get in touch with you if they want to find out more about you? And I'm very active on, on X. Uh, you can find me, uh, okay, I have this neon sign here. Uh, like, uh, you, you can find me at, at Tecala with double eight and double L and and I have also, well, this is my main account. This is where I came, I became famous. And I have also a YouTube channel, same thing, Tekhala. I have TikTok, same thing, Tekhala, but in Instagram, Tekhala was taken, not sure why. So I'm Tekhala.ai, whatever. <laughs> so you can find me on socials. Um, of course, you can find me on LinkedIn too, but I, I'm very, not new because I have my my personal account on LinkedIn, but it's not the same than searching for a job than sharing content. So I'm starting with that. And I have also, if, if you guys are interested on, on a start learning on generative AI, focus uh, on focused on image generation, video generation, storytelling, and so on. Uh, you can find a lot of interesting content in my in my X profile mainly. Uh, I share prompts every day and guides and tutorials and and so on almost every day. And I have also a Gun Road store, but it's like a fake store because I share content for free. <laughs> so uh, a lot of yeah, I have a a, a, a newsletter with six uh six thousand subscribers where i, I i'm not very uh i, I share a lot of uh, uh, sorry a uh, few emails no i'm not um, you know sharing a lot of emails every time and i'm always sharing an email like hey i i have uploaded my last free pdf guide so you can download a lot of guides for free for me journey but the prompts i share there can use can be used in in other platforms so uh yeah th this is i think this is almost everything i have a podcast and and, and a space but in, it's it's in in spanish of course and um we are creating a very cool community i'm very happy because we don't have a lot of content uh, of generative ai in spanish so i think we need more i'm thinking about the starting tweets but also in spanish because you know, it's easy, it's easier for me to have a, a, 
a chat with you like this way because I feel very comfortable and, and more or less I know what I'm going to talk about, but I don't feel I'm capable of having a life in tweets with all that involves. So I, I'm going to feel comfortable in more comfortable in, in, in Spanish, of course. But anyway, you can find me in all of these uh, socials. Uh, my DMs in X are open. So you can just DM me if you have any doubt or any question or whatever. I Sooner or later, I'm going to reply to you. And yeah, just happy to 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 share my content for you guys to to learn how whatever you need for from AI. And uh, I can assure you, I assure you, I'm going to keep sharing it for a long time. So never is too late. Uh, indeed, Gareth, you you engage with me or or like two weeks ago uh -huh. uh, or three and, and i can't remember and you've seen i, I think i'm sharing easy content I, i mean it's easy to use it's like a okay you have only to open grok in twitter and write this prompt copy paste and from there you can use your imagination again so i, I try to do to do it for for uh for beginner for beginners but also i i i I share more complex uh, content, but you know I'm always balancing between complex and easier. So very happy to to contact to yeah to contact anyone who wants. That's really cool. Thanks, buddy. And um, my last question for you is: uh, What does being ridiculously human mean to you? Okay, I was not nervous, but okay, we we didn't knew before. Just we 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 changed some words in a chat. So first of all, I really appreciate the the human perspective of the not interview but a chat because I I'm very used to talk about generative AI all the time about prompting and how do you you know so I really feel very comfortable talking about myself and my daily experience with you and. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I I hope people listening or watching this episode uh, like to know me uh, a little bit better. And uh, yeah, man, I really appreciate what you are doing. Uh, I I I know what is to be a content creator. It's a very hard work. I I, I I'm pretty sure a lot of people think it's like a hey you record yourself and yeah that's no <laughs> there's a lot of work behind the scenes like you prepared the 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 chat the interview you prepared perfect uh and i know there's a lot of there are a lot of questions in in the uh, for for our next talk or whatever so this work uh, requires a lot of time a lot of dedication and i Uh, highly congratulate you for doing that because I really know how hard it is because for example in my case being on YouTube it's very tired <laughs> because I, and, and, and I'm more being not in my natural language because I have to repeat <laughs> these things all the time so uh, anyway uh, yeah I, I I really love that I, I love the the effort and the passion you put on it and uh, yeah, I love that I'm going to of course I didn't knew about the podcast before, so I'm going to to check my interview. Of course, this this record I'm going to send my to send to my parents and my wife, and I'm going to be I'm going to be tuned on on, on new the new content you are going to send and and uh, to share and the previous one for sure. That's very cool, buddy. Thank you, man. I also just wanted to just say like a massive thank you to you. I I, I seriously love like what you're doing. I, I think it's it's absolutely next level and and you are actually inspiring people maybe without even knowing it right so for example when i saw your stuff i i, I took literally one of your prompts and i went straight to grok and i put in a prompt and it was based on a story that i've been telling my daughter right and it produced this super cool like a fluffy yellow, uh, sorry, pink bunny rabbit, <laughs> right? And then I afterwards I got speaking to my wife. We were on the beach, and I was like, "Hey, 
we should think about starting, you know, like maybe say a YouTube channel where we can use AI and create children's stories and, and all these sort of things. And, and that was literally down to your post, right? So what you're doing is very inspiring and you're influencing people, I think way more than you could even imagine, you know, because my experience with online is that maybe one or two people will reach out to you and I'll say, cool, thanks or whatever. But then there's probably like 30 others that are not saying anything, but they're still using your content and being inspired by you. So um, seriously, keep doing what you're doing. You're an absolute master at what you're doing. It's beautiful. I think you are an artist yourself, even though, like you said, you rely on the actual artists for what they've previously created. But you definitely have a, a huge creative side to you. And um, I think you're such a... Uh, asset to the community and um, I'm just really excited for for where this goes for you so so thanks so much for your time Luis it's been uh, it's been really really cool buddy and you know next time we have a chat we go through the the more detailed stuff around AI but th these are cool chats to have you know what I mean like about actually getting to know you a bit better what can I say I really appreciate your words your words uh yeah happy to chat whatever you want um I, I really like to chat with you because it's like, yeah, as I told you, it's like a um, a different space and I feel very comfortable. I, I really like that. So so please, whenever you, you need something, just DM me or whatever, and I can help you with, with that uh, child stories project for YouTube. I have a tutorial for that. I'm going to, to make a share about that. Like I have a tutorial for that. So, <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course I, I really encourage you and all the people seeing this space to, to try these tools because they are going, if, if they didn't uh, at the, at the moment, they are going, uh, these tools are going to blow uh, your mind. So, so yeah, of course, I'm. Um, Really appreciate the time, the, the interview, the chat. And uh, whatever you need, man, I'm here. Thank you, brother. Cool, man.